Thank you very much, Catherine. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I would like first to, uh, to thank the California Science Center, uh, Art and Exhibition uh, International, and of course, National Geographic for uh, making that exhibition possible here in Los Angeles. And of course, the ET Foundation, which is supporting my team and myself in underwater archaeology since uh, 1995. The artifact you will see in that exhibit have something special. They are not coming from various museums scattered around the world. They were all together in the antiquity in some very important cities. The cities of Alexandria, Canopus, and Heraclion. It happened that because of natural disasters, those cities, or part of Heraclion, uh, the wall of Heraclion, the wall of Canopus, and part of Alexandria has been submerged under the sea. And then after, the sediment from the Nile recovered, covered all those artifacts. And after 15 centuries, we were able to discover those sites, to map them, to excavate them, and to retrieve the artifact. And after restoration, they are here. But they are here uh, as they were in the antiquity. They explain each other. They live together. And that makes that exhibition very special. Uh, I hope you will enjoy. And when we walk around those artifacts, think that some of them has been seen and even touched by the last of the pharaoh, Cleopatra. Thank you very much. Queen Cleopatra VII, the last pharaoh of Egypt, and the most famous woman in history. But though her beauty and charm were legendary, no one truly knows what Cleopatra looked like, and her body has never been found. When she died, the story of her life was rewritten by the mighty empire which defeated her. It succeeded in creating a myth that portrayed Cleopatra as nothing more than a wanton seductress. Until now. The most famous woman in Egyptian history was actually descended from a Greek dynasty, the Ptolemies. For 20 years, she formed political alliances to protect Egypt from the greatest invasion force the world has ever seen and secure power for her children. But ultimately, Rome would destroy her. Then her glorious capital, Alexandria, was destroyed by a series of natural disasters, earthquakes, and a tidal wave. Today, the ancient palaces, temples, and Cleopatra's royal quarters lie buried beneath the sea, alongside the modern metropolis. The trail on the hunt for Egypt's most famous queen went cold for 2,000 years. But now two men, Dr. Zahi Hawass and Frank Gaudio, want to set the record straight. Underwater explorer Frank Gaudio has spent 20 years searching for traces of Cleopatra deep beneath the waves. He has mapped the entire port of Alexandria as it looked in Cleopatra's day and uncovered parts of her great palace, the very place where we are told she took her own life and discovered two lost cities, Canopus, a site of religious pilgrimage, and the strategic outpost of Heracleion, both places that were instrumental to her reign. Dr. Zahi Hawass is searching for Cleopatra's fabled tomb. And he's found evidence at Taposiris Magna to suggest that he may be on the verge of finding it. For the first time, all these clues have been brought together in one place. You are about to see the things she touched, experience the places she lived in, and meet the people she loved. You are about to enter Cleopatra's world.
Now, enter the world of Cleopatra. Please proceed past the Granite Queen and continue into the next gallery.